Algerian boxer Emain Khalif has beaten an Italian girl in a round of boxing at the Olympics. This victory <laughs> took place in all of 46 seconds, and the match ended when the Italian girl gave up. And she said, quote, I've never been hit so hard in my life. This has sparked a lot of outrage because the Algerian boxer is an alleged transgender. Now there's people that are coming out saying, okay, she's not a transgender. She has some kind of XY chromosomal issue. I made just a kind of a, a quick snarky post about this. It was meant to be a joke yesterday on social media and immediately got nailed with this pushback, which made me want to, to talk about this because we are being gaslit. I don't know if you realize this or not. If, if you're a Christian and you see what's going on, we saw the same thing happen with the opening ceremonies at the Olympics, where you've got a, an open pagan celebration festival, a clear mockery of the Lord's Supper, and all of a sudden they're coming back at us and saying, well, this this wasn't really a mockery of the Lord's Supper, so you have nothing to complain about, as though it wasn't a big deal at all that there was a bunch of men dressed in women's clothing, and then some other men not wearing clothing at all on a, a family, what was supposed to be a family-friendly episode of the Olympics that we were all watching, the world was watching. You know, no, nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here, folks. Uh, that's gaslighting. That's called gaslighting. That's what that is. A person is doing ridiculous behavior, immoral behavior, and then they are telling you that you're crazy for thinking that they're doing something wrong. That's that's what gaslighting is. It's it's fueling the fire of you thinking that you are crazy. They're That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to polarize you. They're trying to ostracize you, especially if you're a Christian. So I, I came across this yesterday. I, I put my own little post up on social media and immediately got hit with the propaganda, with the talking points of the left trying to tell, in, in the immoral and the pagans, trying to tell us that we are crazy. We're crazy. We're crazy. We're crazy for thinking that a man beat up the woman in the Olympics. We're crazy for thinking that. All it does is illuminate the depths that they have pushed us to. We know for a fact that there have been men competing in women's sports. Anybody ever heard of Leah Thomas or Riley Gaines? We know that this has happened. Women have been withheld medals. We, we've heard the stories about how there have been men, grown men, in women's locker rooms. How is this happening in our culture? We don't know. But now we see this Algerian boxer who may or may not be a transgender. We don't know, but we're crazy for thinking it. We're crazy for being outraged. And, and I, I also thought to myself, this is the perfect talking point for the left, because what you allegedly have here is somebody who's basically a, a natural transgender. It's a, it's a person who allegedly has some kind of deficiency in her body where she has an extra amount of testosterone, which a transgender person will tell you gives them an unfair advantage. It gives them a muscular advantage. It gives them a size advantage. It gives them an, an endurance, a strength advantage, all of these different things. So even if that were true, this person shouldn't be competing with women. But I thought this is the perfect talking point for the left because what we have is a person who is by nature transgender they want gender roles to be fluid right and so i'm i'm just waiting for this to happen where we see somebody complaining that christians are upset about this or or that anybody's upset about this because really what this is is equality in society and you see you can't fit men and women into these simple categories prediction that's what they're going to say. So this Algerian boxer is, in a lot of ways, it's she, she, he, she, whatever, is, is the perfect poster child for liberalism. It is by nature what they've all been trying to achieve for themselves. So that's point number one. And I just want to finish that one by saying you are not crazy. You should be outraged by this. Because even if talking point number one is true, you should still be upset.
this person still should not have been competing with and trading blows with or really pummeling a woman with her fists. Has this person been injecting themselves with testosterone? Surely outside of America, nothing like this has ever happened or even in America itself. Are we supposed to be so naive that we just take the talking points that they spoon feed to us? High testosterone levels, a Y chromosome, either means that you have a birth defect and you shouldn't be competing, or you are, in fact, a man. That is option number three. And the truth of the matter is, we don't know. And because of this, this history of men, yes, men competing in women's sports, we're now faced with this situation. Again, a perfect storm, a perfect scenario for the liberal. They can really use this in order to try to advance their ungodliness in our culture. So how do we respond? Do we just go, oh, okay, okay, oh, oh, I was wrong. Oh, I'm, <laughs> silly me, I'm crazy. I'm seeing a demon around every corner. I'm not seeing a demon around every corner. I saw him in the opening ceremony of the Olympics. And this kind of stuff here, this is what demons do. They do perverted things. They try to destroy culture and civilization. They hate Jesus. They hate God. And they also hate mankind. So how should we respond? Don't let them gaslight you. Take this for what it is. And even if we don't fully understand the situation, it doesn't matter. This person should not have been boxing. Last I checked, I think love is actually standing up for what's right. It's defending those who can't defend themselves. If, if we're not willing to do that, can we honestly say that we're loving our neighbor? Can we honestly say we're loving a world, even if they don't understand what we're doing? The people who murdered Jesus didn't understand what he was doing. The people that murdered the early church and all those Christians and, and other Christians throughout history and who are murdering Christians today don't understand what they stand for, but they murder them because they are murderers, because they are evil, because they are vile. They don't understand the love that Christians have for this world in their heart. And so, yes, so I am being loving to the world. In fact, in my opinion, I'm being far more loving than the person who doesn't want to address any immorality in culture. To me, that is the most unloving thing somebody can do. So, so don't throw that at me and don't say, hey, Christians just... They need to show love, and they need to not offend anybody. Well, every biblical character that was worth anything, including Jesus himself, offended people so that they would kill him because he was supposed to provide a sacrifice, and because he was right and just in the things that he was saying, and because he loved this world, and because he loved Israel, and because he loved God's people and us. And so if I speak out against something, it's because I, assure, I can assure you it's because I love this world. And and you should too. If you're a Christian, you should not be silent on this. This is the point that I wanted to end on. I will not be surprised at all if after this has all run its course like a nasty virus, if we find out that they weren't lying to us in the first place. That, oh, this girl was injecting testosterone into her system. She was cheating. Oh, I, I won't be surprised at all if this comes out. Oh, this girl really was born a man or a hermaphrodite or s some other thing that should have kept her out of this boxing match and sporting event competition. So like I said, from the get-go, regardless of how you want to slice it, this match should never have taken place. But it just underscores really the, the craziness of culture, the craziness of our current society, the craziness of the Olympic Committee, the, the cra craziness of the world, and they're gaslighting us. Don't let them gaslight you. Stand up for what's right, Christians, because if you don't, who else will? And we will eventually be living in a world in which normal does not exist at all. But I think you want better for your kids. I know I certainly do. God bless you, friends. And uh, hey, just want to share my thoughts on that. I will see you in the next video. Make sure if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, you know, all the usual stuff. And God bless you. Hey guys, Pastor AJ here, and thanks for visiting my channel. If you don't mind, I'm going to take just a sec to tell you about Gospel Ministries and our mission to help others experience, demonstrate, and share God's great gospel. If you want, you can pick up some of our merch in our YouTube store to help you communicate that same gospel message.
message. And I'd love it if you would consider subscribing to this channel so that we can challenge your Christian walk through solid biblical teaching as it applies to culture and other issues. In addition to that, you can go to PastorAJ.com where you can consider partnering with this ministry and sign up for my weekly email newsletter. Don't forget, I'm on all other social media platforms at Pastor AJ Platt. One other item that might interest you has to do with a topic that I've studied pretty extensively. It's my book, End Times Mission, that will give you a solid education on the different views of eschatology and, more importantly, your role in Jesus' kingdom while we wait for his return. This book covers the historical origins of popular end times teachings as it guides the reader to Christ's current reign in a post-millennial worldview. Oh, and one last thing. I want you to know that you know Jesus. So if you'd like to, leave a comment or send me a message so that I can help you do just that because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes.